Hey, hey, everybody. Well, friends, welcome Test back time. once again to Swahili Lake here in Orville, outside of Chico. We go now live. He's 75 off at 75. Zero. On for zero. He's shredding it hard. Mm-hmm. Sound check's perfect, buddy. I'm starting to get the calluses. Two days in, six runs. I can barely feel my fingers. They're falling yeah. apart here. Good to be an American. Check, Check one, one, two, two, one, two, two testing. testing. Testing sound for Marcus Brown. Podcast episode number 657. Molly, there's Molly. Molly for Molly. Yeah, it's a it's it's a lot of work. A lot of work. It's a lot of work. You know, and then it also becomes like, so who am I gonna get to do? Who's next? An episode. Because not everybody's as interesting as Bob Marley. Well, it's and it's like what? Because I did, I podcasted for a while, and my philosophy was. What, what was your kind of game? What was your your theme? I want regular people from Maine, so I'd get like the mechanic next door to come over, and I'd sit him down. I go, Larry, tell me the truth. How do you know you're getting screwed by a mechanic? And he's like, I don't really want to talk about that. I go, what do you got, like a union? A mechanic Some union? kind of a thing where you can't discuss it? You can't disclose it? Yeah. I go, dude. I go, you could tell me everything. He's like, oh, I don't want. And like 20 minutes later, he's like, all right, he's here's the deal. <laughs> well, what was the deal? Because everybody needs to know that. How do you not get screwed I by a mechanic? I he, forget. I think he says if, if he starts asking you a lot of questions like, have you, have you uh, checked into the inhibitor lately? Inhibitor. <laughs> Where they come out into the thing and like, I just want to show you your air filter here. I don't know if, you, if you've ever changed, you ever changed this? And you're like, no. And they're like, yeah, I'm not saying it's bad, but something you ought to consider at some point. Uh, and, what, and what does that mean when they say consider? I mean, are you supposed to do it right there on the spot? Because that's what they want you to do. Right. We'll go in silence. They want, you to, they want you to step up and buy the, the biggest Fram air filter they got right there. Yeah, yeah. What is this? Uh, this is like a, a gauge? Calipers, yeah. For skiing? Yeah, for fin measurements. What? Yeah. Dude, this is hardcore. Yeah. So that's, that's people measure their, their ski stuff down to like thousands of an inch, man. Yeah, that's crazy. It's not. It's not. And how much of that do you think helps in performance? 20%. That's a big edge, though. Yeah, but it's not. When you're down to that level. It's just, it's, yeah, but it's, for most people, let's put it this way. What's something, okay, what's something in your line of work that would give you just a, like a 5 or 10% edge? Are we rolling? <laughs> yeah. I so, can't tell you. <laughs> But but that but that wouldn't it wouldn't help me at all if I wanted to get into comedy, you know it's like that. Right. I don't know what the example. But this is like a, if you're just joining us here, we're at the uh, Marcus Brown Think Tank here at the Ridge, and uh, what I have in my hand is a caliper that's going to measure a fin for a water skier. So some guys will come in, they you know, has there ever been like a neophyte, like some kind of lunatic water skier that comes in in like a seven hundred thousand dollar RV? Because I I've seen some of the subculture. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you go to these events, and there's you see guys that clearly either have money or yeah. possibly have done well enough to purchase the eight hundred thousand dollar RV on wheels. Home yeah. On wheels. And he the guy will come out and just shut the door, and he'll just be like, "Check the caliper on those things, Roy." I'm going over to Whole Foods to get some juniper nuts, you know. And meanwhile, Roy's in the park lot. Let me just uh, check. I mean, this is hardcore, yeah, dude. This is, is like it is. so. But but it, once you start measuring fins, like that's like you, that's next level. Yeah. But it's not Roy because there is no Roy because there is no pit crew because we're such a small sport, right? So it, it's dude. the dude that's going to get the juniper pine nuts that he's doing the calipering. It's crazy because like I water skied as a kid first time I ever went water skiing my cousin was actually a pretty good water skier he was a he was a barefooter and he was the guy on the lake where everybody was like I don't know if you've seen him over there but Brendan really knows how to do it 
Um, well, most of them come through on two skis, whatever. But he goes right through the cove there over at uh, over by Bill Johnson's place and zips it right between those two rocks hard. But he was a good skier, and he brought me out on the boat when I was like nine with my other cousins that were all older. And I remember, you know, the instructions are always the same. Keep your tips up and, you know. Yeah. And standard, standard issue, tips up, arms yeah, straight. Yeah, they drag me, I'm underwater, you know, for like a good How 150 old? yards, probably nine. Nine. And First I'm time. like, I do not like this, but I was like, I am going to get up. Yeah, so determined. I, yeah, so I got up and it was pretty good. And then everybody goes crazy and you're like, this is awesome. And it's a feeling you don't forget. And then you think, well, how am I going to get back down to the lake? and go. I got to get my mother to get me down there. I got to get my cousin to be available to take me out on the boat. Because when we would go to the lake, we're Irish Catholic. So my mother was like, we're going to the lake today. I don't want you asking about a boat or looking at the boat, talking about the boat, nothing. We will go down to the lake and then you will get there. No asking about food or snacks of any sort. You will just sit in the corner. You can swim, but only up to your waist. That's and, it. And not for a half hour after you've eaten. Just, just waist depth? You yeah. just marinate. Yes, so it was rare that you could get behind a boat and actually do it. Decent. And then my friend in high school had a camp, so we would go up to his camp. And that's what we call him in New England, a yeah. camp. Yeah. is a structure next to a body of water. <laughs> like, this would be a camp. This is not a cabin or a lake house or a, a cottage. Camp. Camp, dude. Up to camp. You go up to camp. It, it, so, Is it always north? Is it up? Is it always up? You can't it's go over down. or down or through to camp. It's, it's only up. up to camp. So my friend had a camp and we would go out with them. And it was all, it was, a, he had a, a ski that was hung together with a coat hanger. And I, duct tape. it was horrible. Yeah. It was like old Nana skis, yeah. you know, like, think there's one in the shed. Somebody wants to try skiing. Hey, Uncle Phil, uh, come here. He's got a cigarette hanging yeah, off. Yeah. The, I think I got some gas in there if you want. I can fill it up. Yeah, you fill it up. You got the cigarette yeah, hanging off exactly. your lip. So, uh, so we went. Up, we would go a few times. So then I started doing stand up in college. I move away. Yeah. I don't ever go skiing again. And then you grew up in Maine. Maine, yeah. But then you moved away to. I, I lived in Boston two and a half years, yeah. doing stand up down there. And you were down in L.A. Then I went to L.A. for 11 years yeah. and did stand up out there. And, um, you know, I think I, if I went home to, to the lake, I'd ski, you know, once, maybe every five years. And, yeah. you know, I was still on two and then I would drop the ski. And at that, at that point, that was a big thing. Like he's a oh, yeah. Yeah. Th those are my boys out there. He would. You know, you'd you'd drop a ski, and everybody'd be like, "Well, this is uh, pretty fancy stuff." He's kicked one off. So, so then we bought a camp when we moved back to Maine, and then I would ski a little bit more. And then when the kids came, they started skiing, and then we got into it, and it's been awesome. So I like it. So anytime I go on the road now, if I see ski events, I try to go, or I try to bring my gear and ski if I'm in a warm enough climate where you could ski. But let me tell you something. You might as well be doing sketchy drug deals <laughs> because it's always, it's, it's, it's always a guy who has a nickname that sounds like he might have been a quarterback in high school. You'll answer the phone and he'll be like, yeah, this is Skip. Skip. Or this is Sparks. Hey. What, what, what was the guy's name? Tell, me, tell a story about... Um... You were just in Florida. I was just in Florida, and, and you, there's a bunch of places in Florida where you yeah. can ski. A lot of water in Florida. There's a lot of water, but I don't know if a lot of it's legal. Yeah. There's a lot of water, a lot of like canals and bays, and you know. Well, talk about, so I want to know, weren't you down there for like a, you're on the show, you're doing a gig, but you weren't you on a radio show too? Yeah. And the I, guy, he's like, what are you doing? What, what's well, going on? Yeah, I was down there on, uh, on uh, Ron and Paul's show, and I said, I've been water skiing down here, and he goes, water skiing he goes there's gators in those waters and i was freaking out because i was like no you serious he goes there's gators all over the waters man you you i can't there's uh moccasins what are they called cotton mouths yeah cotton mouths yeah I, you shouldn't be in there and i'm like 
Are you serious? He goes, oh, yeah. And he's got a friend. Jimmy Peterson was in there. He saw two gators and one almost got him. And, th and then he started talking to water skiers down there. And they're all like, never happened. Never. Never has there been an attack of an active alligator in the water. But I'll tell you one thing. When they bring you down, they drop you because yeah. they want to talk to you yeah. about your skiing, yeah. which, by the way, is an unsurmountable task. Yeah, for, well... I mean, you you said you have two offsides, right? I have two I, offsides. I, what? I don't think it's true because I saw you crank some pretty sweet turns today. But... Dude, let me explain something. Uh, I definitely have two offsides. And not only that, a lot of people ski like 10 off or like 15 off. I ski 20 on. That's 95 I'm feet. 95 foot at about 12 miles an hour. <laughs> I like to condense it all. So you call these places and you try to set up a thing. First of all, none of them will answer the phone and just be like, the skip, I'm not in. Leave a message, they'll get back to you. If you want to ski in West Palm on Friday, uh, the password is uh, German snakes or something weird. So I, I call the guy and like four days later. Was this a, was this a West Palm? Yeah. yeah. Four days later, I get a call back. Hey, Skip, you call about skiing? And I go, yeah. I get excited like it was like a job interview. I go, yeah, I did. Oh my God, he's, he's calling me back. Yeah. So he goes, meet me at nine. Meet me at nine tomorrow in the parking lot behind the Hilton. And I'm like, okay. He goes, you're not going to see it. The, the sign's all dented and faded, but it's down there. So I'm driving, and I'm like... Air, Airport Hilton. Yeah. Yeah, we've all been there. Yeah. I see it, and I pull in to the parking lot behind the... the and I see the sign. It's smashed. It looks like somebody shot, shot at man. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's dented. It's Florida. Yeah, and, I, and, and so I pull in, and then I pull in the back, and I'm like... I'm squinting, yeah. like, because I can't believe what's happening. I'm like... Where is, what am I, am I making a drug there's deal? a sign that says, do not, absolutely do not swim in this water. <laughs> hazardous, it says, hazardous materials are in this water. They're probably not joking either. This guy comes wheeling in in an 84 Plymouth Horizon, <laughs> gets out and he's got the posture like, he's like, hey. Got a couple ribs out. Are you here to ski? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, are you skiing? Yeah. Get ready. And I'm like, what? So they've got a boat, and I go and get on the boat, and he goes, uh, I go, before I go, uh, w w what's the deal with this, this sign? It says, do not swim in this water. He goes, sometimes there's biohazard waste dumped from boats, fishing boats, they'll <laughs> dump. Sometimes they got bathrooms they dump, or whatever it is, but they usually dump it here. So I don't start you. He goes, I start you out there a little bit. I go, yeah, because we all know that once the substance gets in the water, it doesn't move. So I, I, I get in the water. I go, there are gators? Yep, yep, they are. They don't like it, though. They don't like the boat. And I go, yeah, but I'm not the boat. So. Stay close. Dude, the Stay whole close. thing is like a. Watch for the changes. It's it. <laughs> well, we, that was another story. We, we went to a, a demo up in Maine. We went to a, a wakeboarding demo. Our friend uh, Harry owns a uh, ski shop in Maine. What's a ski shop up there, so people know? It's called Sun Sports Maine. Sun Sports Maine. Yeah. yeah. The boys now are bringing their paddle boards back on. Yeah, boys. Yeah. Bring them on there, boys. Bring them on up. And uh, he's got a place right there at the Naples Causeway, Harry. Harry. And uh, he's got Harry. awesome stuff, and he's a really great guy. And so he offered a, a demo night to watch wakeboarders. Yeah. And we don't wakeboard, we ski, but we said, yeah, we'd like to go out. And so Shane Bonifay and James Loisel show up, who are like two of the best in the business. Yeah. Unbelievable, yeah. Got like world-class competitors. Good guys, good riders. Really nice guys. Yeah. One guy from Maine shows up, he goes, yeah, uh, he's on the boat, he's dressing out about 380. 380? I mean, he's... <laughs> he's a big boy. Oh, my God, he's got Dunlap's disease, <laughs> you know. <laughs> He's, he's rugged. I mean, like salad is not on the menu. And he gets on the boat with his wakeboard, and he has no concept of what's happening. Yeah. Like there's clearly no concept that these guys are pros, and they're going to give him a demo, yeah. and he is going to... He needs to sit there and uh, pay attention. Yeah. yeah, and then if they say to you, do you want to ski, 
or do, you don't want to wakeboard. Offer it up. Yeah, and then maybe we'll give you some tips yeah. based on what we saw. Well, he thought in his mind, in his subconscious, no, I'm going to be giving the demo. So he stood up and there was like probably 10 people on the boat. And he goes, bring me at 24 miles an hour and watch for the changes. And I was like, watch for the, like, are we, are we running a jazz band or what do we, watch for the changes. Watch for the changes. Oh, God. So he goes out and he basically stood there the whole time. And we're all, and at one point he did one of these. He went like that, like, you feeling this? Like that. And I was like, I don't know if that's the change he was speaking. Well, then uh, Shane or James, one of those two, got out there and did like five somersaults and stuck the landing. And this guy stood up as the boat's going like 28 miles an hour. And he goes, how fast were you bringing me? (laughs) That's the problem. Yeah. The speed was wrong. So I called him out. I go, dude, in front of everybody, I said, the speed had nothing to do with that. (laughs) I go, go, these guys are world-class water athletes. Yep. You, this is what they do. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. but sit, anyway. Sit back down. Sorry, bud. Uh, but that's just the thing. That's it's classic. Is it the, 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 you know, the sport is so much fun. We love it. We're, the whole yes. family is completely addicted to it. So, so uh, just real quick, because, you know, Bo Shane, we talked about Bo Shane. Yeah. Jamie Bo Shane. Yeah, so- Bo Shane, uh, <laughs> going on, bub. <laughs> So Bo Shane and I, we used to, do. we used to listen to you back in like 01, 02. Yeah. Right? And, and with a bunch of other water skiers. Yeah. We, we'd have a crew. We'd be out in like Charleston, South Carolina. There's some lakes there. Yeah. Or we'd be in Florida with uh, buddy Chris Rossi. Yeah. Some other pros. And we'd be hanging out. You know, Chris Rossi's from Vermont. Yep. And uh, somebody gave us like a Bob Marley CD. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I like reggae. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, no, bud. This yeah. is this is different. This yeah. is Bob Marley. Like he's still alive and stuff. Yeah. So I, okay, cool. So yeah, man, we fell in love with with the jokes and the and the um, and the funny stuff. But we had, I mean, I had no idea that you were a skier. Apparently, you weren't the level of skier you are now back then. No. But the kids drug you into that. And yeah. I think it's interesting because, I mean, we start talking because Instagram. Well, what, yeah, so you know, what happened like, is, is my kids start skiing, and then they're all in. They're loving it. Yeah. And so I'm, like, the boat driver, which, by the way, gets no respect, <laughs> the boat driver. If, if, if someone has a beautiful run, they, everyone on the boat goes, nice run, good turns. Nobody would look at the driver and go, and good driving. Yeah. Right? If <laughs> Ever. somebody has, Ever. if anything at all goes wrong, they go, that didn't feel right. How fast were you going? Uh, what were you pulling me at? I felt like you jerked me up front too. Were you hammering me in the turns? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Could you keep it keep it straight? Why are you finding the bumps? <laughs> what happens if your wife's driving and you try that tactic? Oh honey, yeah, honey. How fast were you? Were you were you hammered? Were you? Why don't you find someone else to drive you, Bob? <laughs> That's the problem. There's never any driver. I go last yeah. and. Yeah. But my kids love it, so they got into it, and, and then we all started getting into it. So we're on Instagram, and my, my boys are like, Dad, Marcus Brown is our favorite. You've got to start liking, I go, on Instagram. And I was on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. But I never was on Instagram because I thought it scaled younger, and I didn't know it. I'm not a huge... I, I, you weren't paying attention. Yeah. yeah. You weren't there yet. So I go, okay, so I go on the Instagram, and I start clicking like, 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 like. Yeah, it just blown me up. I was like... Bob Marley comedy. This is some some fake account. I'm like, what is this? Right. Whatever. And I start one day. I'm like, finally, okay, I'm gonna check this. I looked, and this might actually be the Bob Marley. He's posting like, you know, <laughs> gig reminders. Gig yeah. coming up in Portland t- yeah. tomorrow night. Don't forget, we'll be down in Spectators in Sanford, wowing the alcoholics. <laughs> wowing. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I was like, Bob Marley. Okay, you sent cool. me a message on that, and I was like, oh, is this the guy from LA? And I go, yeah. And then I, I. So I sent you back a message, and then we, you called the house on the on. We, I put it on oh, yeah. speakerphone, yeah. and the kid, you start talking, and the yeah. kids go, "Who is this?" And I go, "It's Marcus Brown." And they go, "What?" <laughs> they were full scale freaking out. They were like, "This is awesome! This is so cool!" Oh, that's classic. Inside, I was like, I'm "Freaking out! I'm talking to Bob Marley and Co. This is awesome!" Yeah, the Marley Clan. Yeah, so that's it, funny, man. You know, so it's it's um, just I mean, just so you know, like. We did try to get Jamie to come down today. 
because uh, it would have been a reunion for. Oh, you know, dude, it would have been great because, you know, Jamie's a big fan. Yeah. You you you, you probably cross paths. You probably pass each other on the ninety five, but you. Oh, met dude, each other it was, yet. It, probably over you know at uh, Winnipesaukee, oh, or yeah. Sun Sunapee, <laughs> up in six o three area code we were up there i mean that, you know how far are you from winnipesaukee uh probably about an hour, hour? that's not bad yeah, yeah yeah and um so so they get into it they start liking it then they become gear hounds oh yeah so yeah. now at the up to camp we have a, a repair bench that we put we need a repair bench dad i see it all the time yeah. harry everybody's, has one at the shop everybody's doing it yeah, so I come in and my nine-year-old has a brand new ski with not no boot on it, nothing. no toe plate, yeah. nothing. I go, where did all the gear go? Yeah. I just took that and put it on this ski and I moved this over here. And, and so... Gear, I, gear, gearheads, dude. Total gearheads. So if I go on the road and do gigs, I try to go and get a lesson or yeah. do something and then maybe I can bring something home and... To help them out. To help the yeah. boys. And so I'm in Florida... I went skiing in a bunch of different places, and then um, I where's, went. Where's your favorite place you skied in Florida? You think? I like the guy in Naples, the French guy, oh, yeah. Richard uh, Lake Eden. Lake Eden. He he was really pleasant guy, nice guy, and. Um, Did, didn't you have? Didn't something happen there that was a little out well, of the? It, they had some snakes. Oh, you yeah, know, snakes. there were yeah. some snakes, but I shot most of them. The small name. I go okay. And when I first goes, it went there, he, it's 95 degrees. He goes, yeah, he said, get you ready. I need to uh, warm the boat up. I'm like, well, it's a 2016 Nautique. You don't need to warm that up. Why are we warming up? It's 90 degrees. I've never mm -hmm. warmed it. I live in Maine. I've never warmed a boat up. Ever. 50 so, degrees. And then rainy. he drove down the lake and back like five times. Yeah. And I'm like, it's a weird um, warming technique. <laughs> like... And then one of the other skiers told me at Okahili, they go, oh, no, 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 that's not a warmer. That's like a, an alligator thing. Clearing the gators. Yeah. 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 So um, That's how they do it in Florida. Oh, man. They're tough down there, man. Well, when they drop you in the water, that's the only thing you're thinking. The guy goes, okay, what you need to do is get your hips out forward, and you're leaning forward, and in your head you're going, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Start the boat. The gators are coming. <laughs> I hear them coming. Right. They're coming for me. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So that's all you I'm think. I'm exposed. So I'm in Florida, and I go to the first, like, uh, world championship thing oh, yeah. for Nautique yeah. over at uh, Okahili. U.S. Open. Yeah, yeah. which is like, um, you know, asking anybody. They have Okeechobee and Dokadipi, and yeah. I'm like, you guys can't get a main street in Florida? <laughs> what? You know, this is, Okahili. yeah, so I go, where is this? The guy goes, yeah, it's down at Okahili. I go, where is that? Down off of Okeechobee. You got Okeechobee, Okahili, Okadiki, Tikotoki. So I, I go down there. Got lost about 10 times probably on the way there. Yeah, and I'm like. Passed about three Whole Foods. Well, you pull into that Okahili State Park and there's 19 lakes yeah, in everywhere. there. And, it, and 25 baseball diamonds. Yeah, and you're like, whoa, this is crazy. And I was there on Friday for the prelims yep. to see who would qualify. And they were running big dogs and they were running uh, everybody else, the all the other pros. And I'm thinking, this is going to be great. I probably will not find a place to park. Yeah, it's going to be packed. Yeah. yeah. That's what you're thinking. I, I got over there and it looked like they were setting up for the event. <laughs> and I go, where? Where, where is everybody? Where is everybody? And I met Will Asher, who like, could not be nicer. He yeah. was the best guy. Yeah. And I saw him, and I got a picture of him because the boys, you know, they're, yeah. they're fans. And I said, so when do they? He goes, no, we've been running it. We're still we're we're going already doing it. And I go, it's happening now? And I started, like, scrambling. Like, I got to get in position. Yeah, position. <laughs> I got to get a seat. And first of all, uh, Okahili, great job. But... Uh, if you're going to have 14 sets of bleachers, let's try to get at least more than one person in each bleacher. <laughs> Five wind socks on the side of 95 South ain't going to cut it. No. Like, we no. need some major promotion. Cardboard, three by five cardboard sign. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a Sharpie. Yeah. Yeah. People that don't water ski look at it and go, okay, yeah, whatever. That, I could probably do that. But you can't. No. You no. probably can't do it. Ever. You can tee up a golf ball and probably hit it. 
but you can't get in the water and drag yourself on one ski and fly around yeah. without a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work, and so they don't. Is, uh, is that their downfall? Well, because like you said, you could go to the driving range, or you could go play tee it up. Yeah, and you could get lucky and drive one two hundred fifty yards down the fairway. Yeah, and keep it in the green. But it's really hard to get lucky like that and run the course one day yeah. out of nowhere. It's world-class athletes, like, yeah. like, unlike no other. And so I'm in my head thinking, this is huge. This should be... I know what you're thinking, because Bob Marley's a comedian. I mean, you're an athlete. Yeah. You've been at, what's your fastest mile, you think? Uh, 454. 454 mile? Yeah. What, and you, did you qualify for Boston Marathon? No. How many uh, marathons do you run? 20. 20 marathons? Yeah. So Snow he ski, is an athlete, folks. Played hockey my whole life. I basically look like a pipe cleaner with man boobs. Now. <laughs> but don't underjudge the Irish Thunder. But um, yeah. So you can, qual- you can judge athletes. You're well, qualified. I, I'm a huge sports fan. I, yeah. I, I, I try to do everything and get involved, and, and I, I, sh- I was excited. I showed up, and I'm like, man, this is not where it should be. No. This is a bummer. You the know? Little League going on next door. And well, that was Friday. Saturday I showed up, and there's the place is packed. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, this is more like it. Yeah. The prelims must be for like this, the super yeah. fanatics yeah. or something. And I pull up and I'm like, I, I look over and it's, uh, there's more people at the little league game. I'm not even exaggerating. There's people inside. You're, you're the best, Justin. We love you. You're awesome. N- Nate, A lot of promotion. Nate and Willie are over there. Best in the world. All yeah, Nate Smith is running like 65 off at 80 miles an hour, and he's fully extended. Like basically, his spleen is coming out through his mouth, and I'm like, w- Justin, Justin's hitting t-ball. Yeah, you got a fat kid over here, like with a ho ho, and in one hand swinging the back, going, "Hi, mom." I mean, I'm like, what is wrong with this picture? We're 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 lo- we're a lost cause. What the heck, man? We're a lost cause. You know, but. but but, the, but did you have fun? I had fun, but you have to, if you don't go to those tournaments, you don't know, you like, don't know. what's going on. First of all, the, the, the guy that gives the announcements is always from another country. Yeah. He's always, like, Australian or something, yeah. and everything comes down to, like, metric. Yeah, like, of course. This is a U.S. Open. Let's have everything in English. US. Like, if you were, like, a basic skier, you're like, yeah, I skied uh, 30 off at 30, and I got... Two, you know, like everybody that skis basically knows what that means. Yeah. But when you go to the tournament, the guy's like, here we are now. They're coming in. Asher's lining up and he's going 40 off at six and four, three quarters meters at a terabyte. Getting ready for the flux capacitor. I'm like, what? What just happened? What? I, and I look over at. Casey Contos and his dad, yeah, they yeah. wicked nice guys from Indiana, I yeah. think. And I said, what is he talking about? And they're, they're like, we don't know. Water skiers are a lot like runners. There's great camaraderie. Yeah. Yeah. And so I said, what is he talking about? And they kind of started laughing. They weren't like, excuse me, could you please not ask questions? Yeah. He goes, oh, no, that's, he's, he's. They didn't give you the. Yeah. Yeah, he, watching, he's, it's uh, 39 off is what it is. And I'm like, but even they had to do the math. math. I'm like, why are we doing the math? Why are we, bre- why are we having it in meters? Convert, conversion sheets, trying to, trying to figure yeah. it out. Here, yeah. comes, here comes Nate Smith. One second, we're getting the... The reading. <laughs> oh, it's 30 off. So, so let's talk real quick about... Yeah. You got to go to the U.S. Open. Yeah. You were a little disappointed which we all are in the sport about the attendance record. Yeah. But you did get to witness the best in the world Yeah, from the shoreline. Yeah. And then yesterday you got to see my brother run through like 38 off. You got to see him from the boat. Yeah, this, this is the analogy. Uh, if you are a storm chaser and you're in a truck like people in Indiana, me and my brother, we saw it. It was... 14 miles that way, and we chased it for a while. We got some shots of it with his Polaroid. <laughs> like, that's basically like watching it from shore. Yep. When you're in the boat, it's yep. like you are in the twister. You're, you see the cow come you're, by you're and everything. You're in the Batmobile, and you're in the middle of it. Yeah, your brother shows up here, and he goes, Hi, name's Matt. How you doing? Like, very, very subtle, 
humble guy. Oh, yeah. I guess I'll ski. Sure. I'll go out. And it was like a, a, a full display. I mean, this was like, you know, a, like a Gatlin gun. Gah, 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 gah. And my two boys were in the boat going, we've never seen anything like this. Because from the boat. It's still a different ball game. It just looks yeah. violent. Yeah. And it does. It, yeah. It's coming fast and hard. And, and he was only 38 off. We were talking. Those guys at the U.S. Open, if you would have been in the boat there, your your head might have spun off because it's that's like 39, 41 off. You're three feet closer. The boat speeds two miles an hour faster. Doesn't yeah. sound like much, but no, you know, two miles an hour is the difference between a ticket and no ticket on the highway. It's the difference between, you know, your spleen coming out your mouth, or or not on the water. You know, it is huge. It's huge, and uh, yeah, it, it was it was great to watch. Super impressive. So, so let's talk about who Bob Marley is, because some people don't know. If you're still with us right now, some people don't know who Bob Marley is. Yeah. I mean... Maine. Grew up in Maine. Yep. And uh, typical... Top, top three accomplishments in your life. Just if you're going to go to the top of your resume. Well, we'll you we'll, always got to say kids, um, oh, okay. wife. Yeah. People always say that. My, my kids are the best thing that's ever happened to me. He does mean it. I've, I've seen him with his kids. I love my kids. I do, but it, yeah. but uh, aside from the givens, that's just normal. That's just yeah. I get that. Career wise, yeah, career wise. Well, moving to Los Angeles was huge yeah. because it opens up all those doors, and yeah. just by proximity, if you're there, you brush and shoulders. Yeah, you end up doing a lot, you know. So I did tons and tons of stand up on TV, and yeah. um, you know, uh, some movies, uh, Boondock Saints movies, yeah. um, one and awesome. two. Yep. Yeah, and those were a blast. I, I, Who was your favorite actor to work with on set? Billy Connolly is phenomenal because yeah. uh, he's a stand-up. Yeah. He's a Scottish guy, and he's hilariously funny and unbelievably kind. And Willem Dafoe is great, too. Yeah. Willem Dafoe was like, I mean, I did stand-up. I wasn't really an actor, so I wasn't really that nervous when I... Element. Yeah, well, I wasn't really that nervous, though, when I get it because I'm like, I'm a comedian. I'll, I'll have fun. Whatever. I'll turn the funny jets up when it comes time and it'll work out. Yeah. So the first day I, I'm there and I'm like face to face and I have a scene with him where we're like screaming and yeah. Yeah. it's getting heated and then I'm like going, wow, this is great. That was great. That was awesome. Three days in, I'm doing a scene with him and I think I hear what is my mother's voice. We're filming in Toronto. I, my parents live in Maine. So I hear, well, I just... And I hear my dad go, yeah, I know. Shut it down. Shut it down. So I go, in my head, I'm going, clearly that can't be them. Yeah. Well, I mean, why would they be here unannounced yeah. on a film set? Yeah. And so Willem Dafoe says something, and we're, we're on a steady cam. Yeah. So they're, they're, there's no single coverage. So yeah. they're going back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. And when they go to him, I kind of let my eyes go left, and I, my parents are there. Are there? On set. And my dad is on the li standing basically on the line of where you sh should be and shouldn't be. Like one step left and you're in the movie. He's in the field of play. Like, it'd be right. like 12 men on the field, you you'd get a penalty. So now I can see a production assistant going, we got a, uh, we got a scrambler here. <laughs> we, got, we got something rogue happening. <laughs> so they yell cut and my dad has a stack of Willem Dafoe movies in his hand. They go cut and my dad goes, William Dafoe. And it's, first of all, it's Willem, Willem. Dafoe. It's not William Dafoe. <laughs> and then he goes, I got to have you sign the clear and the present and the danger. And he passes it to him and Willem Dafoe goes. Is this in the middle of filming? Yep. And Willem Dafoe goes, okay. And he grabs a stack of movies and goes into his trailer. Did he know it was your dad? No. He had no idea. But I go, I think he did, but I go, I'm done. Done. There's no way I'm not done. You can't recover from this. I'm gonna be fired. Yeah. We've been, we've only filmed two days. They could easily replace me. Go back and reshoot those. I'm done. But this is how cool Willem Dafoe is. So, my dad calls me later. He goes, "Well, I guess we'll see you at supper." I go, supper. "Where are we going to supper?" And he goes, "William Dafoe was bringing us out to supper." So we go out to dinner with him, and he sits with my parents all night long. Yeah. And we have dinner entertains them all night long. And then afterwards, my mother goes, I will say this about William Daffo. He is, is not a good-looking man, but he is a very sexual man. 
And I go, okay, well, I just threw up in my own mouth. There's no need to. <laughs> Coming from your mother's mouth. To, yeah, what do you do? How do you come back that's to awful. that? That's oh, awful. But man. he was like the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. And that was a great experience. And, you know, you, you learn a lot. A lot of great friends from yeah. those two movies. And, um, and uh, Troy Duffy, the director, was just a great guy. And, you know, they made a second one, and they killed me in the I, second movie. Yeah, that's... And then the third did, movie... Did you have any say in... I called him when I read the script. I go, why are you killing me? He goes, they like you. You have to, you, got, it has a value. You've got to create tension. Yeah, it has a value. They like yeah. you. So they're doing a third movie, I think, at some point, And all my relatives are the worst. They're like, Bobby, someone said the other day, I forget where I was, Shaw's, I think, Shaw's. buying some carrots on sale. And they said that they're doing a Boondock Saints 3. Are you going to be in that? I go, well, no, because they shot me. I'm dead. In the second one, I'm dead. Dream sequence? Dream sequence. Dream sequence. Possibly a dream sequence. I'm like, no, there's not going to be a dream sequence. I'm dead. I'm done. I'm done. So, um, so yeah, so we did that and uh, tons of touring and tons of albums. And when I lived in Los Angeles, I got to the point where we started having kids and then I got to the point where I was like, I really just want to do stand-up. Yeah. And I don't think I need to live here to do that. Specialize. Focus on that. Yeah, and so I, my wife's from Maine, and so I said, I think we should go back to Maine. We have a great following in New England. We've built like a little mini Jimmy Buffett-type yeah. following. Pearheads. And it's just a blast, you know. Is there an equivalent term for not pearheads, but no, you call them? They used to call them Farley's. Farley's? Yeah, fans of Miley. Yeah, Farley. Farley's. And one lady was starting this thing where she'd show up with Farley shirts. She goes, Bob, I'm a Farley. And I would, I'd be on stage going, okay, yeah, okay. good, let's, cut it off. let's bring cut it, it down, down a little. But um, anyway, so it, we went back and so I tell people the two best things I ever did was move to Los Angeles and then move okay. home. Yeah. Not because I didn't like LA, because I did like it. I had a lot of good friends and everything, but when you get to a certain point and you know what you really want, um, we went back and it's been great for the family because we snow ski 60 plus days a year. We water ski literally every day in the summer. All the outdoor activities right there. Yeah, it's a blast. And I don't have to travel as much. You know, I'm not on the plane as much. So, Who, who were you talking to? Uh, one of your buddies in L.A. Was it Burr or somebody that didn't know you left? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, um, uh not, oh yeah, Bill Burr. Yeah, he did say that to me. He goes, how'd you go, Molly? Where'd you go? Tom Papa, do you know him? He yeah. opens for yeah. Seinfeld a lot. He's a very funny guy. Yeah. The, the night before I left, he was standing next to the stage. We're talking. He goes, anyway, so my wife and I go to Ikea. And then they call his name and he goes on stage. Yeah. And then I left the next morning. I didn't see Tom Papa for like five years, right? So I'm in New York and I'm working uh, uh, down near the meatpacking district at, at Go a Gotham Comedy Club. This is how funny Tom Papa is. So he walks through the door and he sees me and he walks up to me and goes, anyway, we go to Ikea. <laughs> like, <laughs> Bix right up five years five later. Five years later. Dude, how do you remember that? And I, and I looked at him and I paused for a second and I laughed hysterically. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes, where the hell did you go? Where did you go? And I go, I just oh, tapped out, dude. dude he I goes, you didn't tell anybody. I go, I know, but I don't want to make a deal out of it. Yeah. Like, I'm leaving. Yeah. Going yeah. away party. Yeah, yeah. Hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, it's just tacky. Champagne. Yeah. So we went back, and um, we love being on the lake, and we love the, you know. Up to camp. Yeah, and we teach tons of kids how to water ski. Um, every one of my kids' friends basically water skis now because we... I like I like how the tube doesn't is broke. Well, the, we have a tube that's filled up with air. It's right next to the dock, and the kids go tube. Yay, we're going tube. And I go, that doesn't work. Well, how doesn't it work? It's filled up. I should probably let the air out. You should deflate it. Right, and I go. Yep. The rope is. Uh, it's got a uh, mastoid in it. A mastoid. <laughs> I just make stuff up. <laughs> They're like, what's that? I go. It doesn't work. Deflate gate. It's not the proper appropriate PSI over here. Right. We're gonna do yeah. some skiing. Yeah. So we get them up on the boys get in the water and they help their friends and they teach them how to ski and they love it. You know, and we love being on the lake and and uh, it's awesome. It's a lifestyle. It totally is. You know. I like how your kids pulled you into it because that's, you know, we, I talk about a lot. I think lake life is not just about what you do on the water. That's like totally secondary. It's like your friends and your family and the group that you have and the crew that you that you hang with. Yep. 
And I, I just, I think it's funny that your, your kids are the ones that got you skiing more than five times a year. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, that's, that's really cool. That's a good story. Yeah. Once you know? they got all in and, and started loving it, but, but you're like, you're, you're, you're right. It is, um, like my wife and we have tons of friends up on the lake and you know, everybody's, um, it's, it's about the food and it's about, um, just hanging out and being on the boat and, and how do you not, my mother will call me every Sunday. I went to mass today and I didn't see you. So I don't know where you people are. That's what she calls us, you people. I go, mom, I, I'm Irish Catholic growing up. So I went to church twice a week. Wow. Plus CCD. Is it, is it Wednesday? Sunday school, I went Tuesday for uh, CCD, and then I went Sunday morning, yeah. and then went to Mass on uh, Saturday and Sunday because my parents worked different schedules. So, oh, we, so you had to go both. Yeah, and then when I was 14, I wanted to be the bell ringer. You know, the kid that rings yeah. the bell? Yeah. ding a ling a ling a ling a ling ling yep. Yep. And the priest said, you can't do that. You're not qualified. You're too, you're too old now. Yeah, and I was like, I'm not qualified. You, got, you know, like when they pass out at halftime, they pass out the Jesus cookies, <laughs> like the, the yeah. communion? Yeah. Right. Jesus I go, how am I not qualified? You get a big long line of the priests yeah. and then they got to start opening up other registers. <laughs> and those guys that come in, that they're not qualified clergy. No. It's like a guy with a Dale Earnhardt. He's like, I'm open over here. Any money I can put it in your hand or in your mouth. Or you can take it from my mouth with your mouth. <laughs> I tapped out, dude. I'm like, I'm not, I'm, done. I'm not doing I'm, this anymore. I'm done with the scene, Ma. I, we literally will drive the boat in the middle of the lake and I'll just turn the boat off and I'm like, this is it. Moment, yeah. Right, this, 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 or on the chairlift. Yeah. You got a lot done, yeah. you know. I can turn that boat off in the middle of the lake and just sit there and go, anybody got anything? Yeah. Who's got something? Who's got something we want to, we want to share? Yeah, yeah. and, and it, it's, um, and it's great, you know, when, I mean, if you have a friend that has a boat or you get access to it, you can do it almost anywhere. You just yeah. got to have the desire. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, that's one thing that we talk about, like the barrier to entry. You know, it's hard. Yeah. Golf, you can just hit a ball. Yeah. Skiing's hard to get up. But also, it's the, it's the equipment. Yeah. The skis, it's the vest, it's the boat. Yeah. But there's ways to get around that. There is, yeah. It's, there's definite ways to get around It's the smiles, though. These kids yeah. get up. It's unbelievable. Yeah, you guys, you, you know? do you teach... What does that feel like to teach kids how to ski for the first time? Well, you can tell immediately whether or not you're going to have 40 pulls yeah. or two. Oh, by the first attempt? You can look at the kid yeah. and go, this is going to be all day. It's going to take forever. And if yeah. the kid has a good amount of substance in him, yeah. it's going to be yeah. six hours. Yeah. <laughs> but What's the most attempts it's taken to get some, a kid up on top of the water? Uh, I'm guessing probably 40 or 50. Wow. And then it was like a 10 foot thing and then drop and fall. But yeah. we had a guy, a full grown man that wouldn't give up. And he, kept going, he, going. he goes, I think, um, I think I'll go again. And everybody in the boat was like, no, no. you do not have it in the tank. <sighs> no, it's not there. Yeah. Okay. You do not. This is nothing that's, and, and you know, and every time he got up, it was worse than the night. It was crashing and burning. He goes, no, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm like, you have nothing left in your arms. How are you possibly doing this? But some kids pop right up. Yeah. Surprise you, know, you yeah. Oh, yeah. And they, they start flying. It's awesome. You know. Have you ever ridden the cable? One of them things, that, the twirly things? I rode the cable. Um, you know, well, I, here's the deal. I went to Ski Rickson that's down. that's totally different than the than a boat. I went to Deerfield Beach in Florida and just to look at Ski Rickson and they had the cable. I was like, this is pretty cool the way they do it. So I didn't have gear or any time to do it then. But when I went to Texas to do shows, I went up to the Texas Ski Ranch, yeah. and uh, which is literally in the middle of nowhere. It's between San Marcos and Austin, middle of nowhere. Yeah, and if you were driving by it and you saw it, people would be like, what is that? And then someone would go, I think they're water skiing. I don't know. It, you, it's in the middle of nowhere. nowhere. So I, I get out there and uh, I go, is there any boat time? And the guy goes, nope, we're booked, all, all booked up. And I think he looked at me too and was like, oh. He, he, he prejudged, he's like, this guy, this is the 40 pole guy. He's yeah. never gonna get up. Right. I don't wanna waste my time. I don't wanna be with yeah, him. I don't, I don't need that. So uh, he goes, cable's open though. You can go over there and do it. A lot of people do it. And I go, okay. So I go over there and I go, uh, how fast is this cable pull? He goes, 19 miles an hour. And I go, that's not, I'm, that's not I'm not a great skier, but I don't think that's going to work. He goes, people do it all the time. You want to sign the waiver? 
I'm like, okay, here comes the sign the waiver. I don't know if you've ever filled out a ski waiver at a ski park, but it's like literally, what am I buying a condo? Dead Sea Scrolls. Oh my God. It's like this. Also in the event that you would, and then you wear a helmet. I've got a helmet on. I'm like this. And, and I go, do I have a ski? Where, what skis do you have to pick from? He goes, that one over there. It came up to my nipples <laughs> and, and the ski is like 52 inch dude. And he goes, I go, is this the only one? He goes, people use it all the time. I go, where are these people? <laughs> what people? Yeah, get, well, get them to vouch. What? So I get the thing on. And if you've never skied a cable before, you sit on a bench, right? So you, you're, si you're sitting up. You're, your skis this much above the water. You're like, you're like probably, I don't know, a foot and a half above the water. There's a big dock, yeah. You're, yeah, you're there's up a, there. So yeah. if you're on a wakeboard, which is basically, you know, like like half the size of, of a paddle board, of course you're just going to come down and take off. Well, he goes, people do it all the time. He goes, on the bench. And I go, I feel like I'd be better in the water. I really do. I really <laughs> and he goes, on the bench. Those are the rules. And I got the helmet on. It's crooked. And there's like a bunch of 15-year-olds in line. And I'm arguing with the guy. And they're all looking at me going, what is this loser doing? I'm right out of Maine. I have no tan. I'm Irish. I have like milky white legs and tube sock lines on my shins. You know, a bunch of cracked yellow toenails that barely made it through January. And he's like, on the bench. He had this look like, if I have to tell you one more time, I'm calling you're, you're gone. authorities. Yeah, you're gone. So I go, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, Texas. I'm not here to cause trouble. Yeah. All right, ombre. So I get on the, on the bench. The thing comes around and it rips me a good 25 yards into the water and I face plant and I'm underwater and I can hear the kids on the dock go, oh, oh my God. So I come up and, and the guy's like, he, there was no, there was no like, are you okay? This no is concern what, at this all. This is what it was. Get out of the way. <laughs> Get out of the way. It's there's coming a, through. There's a cable coming. Yeah. And I said to him, maybe I could the next try uh, drop a ski. And he goes, we, first of all, we don't have two skis. Secondly, you're going to drop it in the middle of the course, and then a wakeboarder is going to come around. No, you're not dropping a ski. And I go, okay. So I'm in line now, and all the kids in line are kind of like this. Not looking? No, They I'm don't want to look at me. Yeah, the old guy. The they feel bad for me. Yeah. They don't want to make you feel worse than you already feel. And I'm like, I drove out here from Austin like an hour, and I'm not going home. No. None of these people know me. No. I don't care how this shaves out. I'm getting up. I'm making an effort. Yeah. Second pull, 25 yards, underwater, shorts, halfway down to my shins, and my <laughs> ass is hanging out. And I'm like, okay, now not only is this embarrassing, but it's borderline indecent exposure. <laughs> like I could be a bunch a, of 15-year-olds. Hanging out. I could be arrested. Yeah. So Pee -wee, I, Pee -wee Herman. I come up in there and, and I, the guy goes, get out of the way. And, and so, but now I'm kind of building like some support. Yeah. Because. Rapport. I, I complied. I was like, I will get out of the way. I'm all, all right. Thank you. <laughs> and I get back onto the thing. And some, how long is the wait from the back of the line? to tw 25 people probably. And it's a good 20 minutes every time. Yeah, every time. At least in the guy. And, and I'm so way at the back of the line. You're, and you're almost an hour of your time invested into this thing. And these two horrible rips. Yeah. And so I'm at the back of the line. And, and there's a couple kid. One kid goes, you can do it, man. You can do it. And I'm like, yeah. Okay. I don't have any gear. I've got the, the life jacket, which is a train wreck. Everything looks bad. Yeah. Everything's crooked. Everything's, I have no like rasher shirt on. So, it, every, you know, I'm 49. There's like puckers. puckers. It doesn't look good. It's a train wreck. So the third time comes around. And now all the, everyone in the line's like, come on. Come you got on. this. You got right, this Uncle Bob. Money being exchanged. Yeah. Third rip, equally as bad, in the water. And I come up, I go, I'm done. And I walked out. And then one kid looked at me and went, Nuts. Yeah. yeah, gave him the nuts. He was like, it's all right. Yeah. Nice try. <laughs> Better luck next time. And you, you, can, you can't recover from that. You can't no. be like, back no. home, I ski behind a boat and I do all right. You can try, though. You, you can't you try. You can. You can. I promise I, I can do this. Uh, but they have those places all around. And, yeah. you know, um, but now to them, you, I'm known as, remember that guy? Yeah. 
yeah. you know, and, and there's all those different types of skiers. When you're out on the lake, there's the bender, you know, the one that first gets up, it's like this, bend over, and everybody on the boat's going, stand up, stand up. <laughs> no, and he, can't, he can't hear, you're, or he doesn't want to try. You're screaming at yeah. him, stand yeah. up, and you hold your back, back up, back, back straight. stand up. <laughs> Nothing. And they're like, they have this whole thing like, you know, they're swearing at you in their head. Yeah. You know, the bender. Then there's the politician, the guy that gets up and... He's waving at everybody. Yeah, we see you. We see you, Jerry of the day. Yeah, waving at everybody. Hey! I'm doing it! I got this. Somebody call Central! <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh. Bring me by the dock guy. That's a big one. Yeah. Hey, I'll get up. I'll make one pass, bring them by the dock. I think everybody's still down there. I want to show them some stuff. You some know? stuff. Right. Yeah. What kind of stuff? There's that guy. Then there's the, the sandbagger, though, is the one. You know, they get in the boat. Well, maybe I would try to ski. I, don't, I haven't done it for God. I don't even remember. 20 years, probably, at least. Like, they're full of it. Yeah. They did it a week ago. Right? Yeah. And so skis in their car. I go, oh, I've got two skis here if you'd like to, like to try them. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 I'll go on one, and I'm like, eh, and a little radar goes off, I'm like, hmm. Okay, something's going on here. Right, yeah. right, and then they're like, uh, take me at 32. Um, you're like, uh-huh, I haven't skied in 20 years. Yeah, they pop up the first time, and they're out there, and everybody on the boat is like, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Cutting around, making it look, making it look uh, like they never stop skiing. Dude, it's just... What, what's, what's your, what's your all-time favorite memory from being on the lake with family with friends um you yourself behind the boat i think what my griffin my nine-year-old he got up um on one ski the first time yeah. he got up because yeah. abby my daughter had done it for years yeah and then cooper got it and he was getting pretty good at it how old are the three how old are they 16 abby 16 cooper's 12 and griffin's nine and didn't griffin just turn 10 just turned 10 today, today. Yeah. Shout out, G. Happy birthday, G. And we're, we're going to get him out here in a little bit. We, uh, we were... Shred bros. Yeah, we were um, trying to get him up and trying to get him up. And, and we went to Lake Mead in Vegas. We went on a family trip. We went out to Lake Mead and went skiing. And so Coop went up and skied. And then uh, Griffin bought a new HO Grifter. Yeah. And That's I go, a good name. Yeah, I go, dude, today's the day. Yeah. Let's, this is where we're going to break it. Let's knock this out. You're going to get up. I get in the water with him. My buddy's driving the boat. And uh, he did not get up. You're so right. he right. was so bummed. And he wouldn't get back and, and he ski. Was done. He was done. He's like, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah. So for a month and a half, he sat in the boat and watched his yeah. brother ski. Yeah. Every day I go, buddy, if you yeah. just give it a shot. He goes, just try. No, no, no. I'm done. I'm done, Dad. So we took a junior O'Brien and put a ski boot on it. And... Built him a ski, yep, and then together. I said, "Look what I built for you, man. Let's try it." And then he goes, "No, no." And then one day he just came down to the dock, jacket on and everything. He goes, "On his own." Yeah, he goes, yeah. "Today's the day." Yeah. I go, "What?" He goes, "Yes." Game face, dude. It was like two poles, yeah. and he was up and shredding it across yeah. the water. Yeah. It was great. And the boys, obviously, they're at an age where they're always arguing and fighting. Yeah. But you can hear clearly on the videotape when he got up. You can just hear Cooper going, "Yeah." So, so stoked. So happy for him. So then all of them were slaloming and all of them are skiing. And that's a, that was a great day. Yeah. So, and, I mean, everybody's, all the effort and the work and everything that goes into Days it. Days off. Yeah. So tell me what a day, what's a typical day, like either Lake Mead or back, back at home at camp. What's a typical day look like as far as prepping for that day, the morning? Like, yeah. just, is it just a circus around the, the camp? Or well, here's it, what we what, do. What, what's it look like? What's it feel like? So we, you know, I do stand up at night yeah. and a lot of the gigs we do are actually at lakes and stuff. Yeah. So we'll go to a lake, right, lakeside, and four or 500 people will be watching me looking at the lake. Yeah. And, you know, we'll do the show at night. Next morning, I'll go home, I'll get home around 10 or 11, whatever. Next morning, we get up at, we, we'll do a little water report, yeah. and Griffin or Cooper will come who, in. Who wakes up first? Griffin, always, and he'll the come. Nine, the 10 year old. Yeah, come in and whisper and go, have you seen the water yet? And I go, I haven't, because I've been sleeping. So he goes, like glass, just like glass. 
And I go, mm, great, perfect. And it's not always like that. I mean, it's not like the Ridge yeah. where it's consistently good. Yeah, that's pretty good right now. Yeah, I mean, this is like, you know, we get some chop, and what, but usually in the mornings, it's great. Yeah. So we get up, we all go down, we ski, we come back, we eat breakfast, and then we will probably go back out again and ski and then have lunch and then we might go back out again and ski in the afternoon and, and just have a blast and they'll have friends that come up and and do all that and then i'll go back out and do another show at night and and go to or, or go to i got friends that ski too and you know they're lunatics yeah i have one Crazy. friend that stood on a 12-foot rock with a slalom ski and Jump Irish, uh, yeah, Irish guy. Oh yeah, and of course you got to be Irish to do that. He's built like a fire hydrant, and he, and he just goes, "Hammer down, <laughs> hammer down!" <laughs> and we're in the boat going, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "Hammer it!" <laughs> he, he 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 like runs with the ski, and he jumped off, and he went into the water, and he came up, and he pops up like, and he it, it worked, and we were like, "What was that? That was unbelievable!" <laughs> oh yeah. But you know he he goes like a hundred miles an hour across the wake and what what kind of, what kind of preparations do you have to take to live life on the water in the summer and the sun when you're Irish? Oh, it's horrible, dude. I I got one. I got a thing on my back right now that yeah. I I don't even know what Flesh, it is. I think it's like Chihuahua or something. Flashable. Has to be cut off for do you, sure. Do you wear like like rash guards or sun sun shirt or something? Well, my like? here's what happened. We we I mean usually I'm the driver. Yeah. So I'm, I've always, always got bundled. a hood, I've got this, I got zinc all over me, and I'm up there like this, you know, and yeah, driving. And, but when we went to Maui, my, my wife's, we, we went down there and we were going, my wife goes, let's go to the pool. And so she throws me this uh, long sleeve black shirt, and I go, what is, what is this? And she goes, that's your swim shirt. And I go, Wait, am I on a team? Like, what's <laughs> Jersey, just my swim jersey. Yeah, what it, what is? I've never worn a jersey swimming. Like if I ski, I wear a wetsuit yeah. topper or yeah. like a rasher shirt. If you're yeah. skiing, because yeah. I it just you feel more Feels compact. Better. Yeah, and so uh, you're, all, you're gathered. Everything's gathered. But just in the pool, I've never been like, let me get my shirt. So she goes, no, it is a, you know, keeps the sun off you. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, nothing keeps the sun off you more than a jet black shirt. <laughs> So she goes, well, you're Irish, you'll keep the sun, and it'll make you look a little bit better. And I'm like, oh, I heard that. Make so she was basically saying, cover up. You don't look good. Trying to, trying to make you look a little more slim, honey. Right. And, slim and trim. Yeah, and so, uh, and by the way, guys, if you're watching, if your wife has any uh, negative comments about you or your body or anything, your clothing, you're not allowed to rebut. You suck it down, you put it here, you die first. That's how it works. Die first. You die first before you let that go. I would never sure. say anything about my wife's body. Like if she came out of the, ba the bathroom with a bathing suit on, I would never be like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I just a swim shirt on. Just squeeze your bucket into that piece of nylon. <laughs> my God, have a piece of fruit. <laughs> I would never say that. No, no. So then she puts SPF 110 on my face. No, I, I look like a bucket of chalk. With, I look like a mime headed to the pool. <laughs> And I was walking by the pool and I heard this lady go, look, 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 look. And I'm like, I can hear you. I can, I'm right here, lady. I got, I got that. I got uh, that. <laughs> but it, it oh, man. you know, yeah, that's, that's stuff. You have, you, to, go, you have to take precautions. Then. You have to. Yeah. I mean, you're, especially because we don't see the sun all the time. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, in Maine, right? Up, yeah. Up, up at camp. You yeah. Know? I mean, you got to be careful. Yeah. And we go skiing. We're skiing right into most years, November. Yeah. So the boys are like, out there or diehards full wetsuits in I, the morning this you guys are here we planned this like three weeks ago bob yeah. called today hey, what's it looking like out there i said well i mean we're gonna pack the boat up here pretty soon you know you probably talk about let's talk about next spring he's like well we're thinking about here in a couple of weeks so okay it's gonna be thanksgiving soon but we can give it a shot right we're out here with no wetsuits on no wetsuits at all the kids are in the water like look cold well colder than i thought we'll be all right we'll be okay yeah. Oh, the boys are in heaven, though. I mean, yeah. this place is, there's a million skis here. And th this oh, is... yeah. I, I come out to this morning, and they, they got like eight or ten syndicates lined up. They've, they've got them all dusted off, washed off. Yeah, they slept out here in the ski shack last night, and they were like, I'm sure that my older son was probably in the middle of the night going, there's one. There's another ski. Precious. Oh, my God. <laughs> Put the lotion in the bucket. It puts the lotion in the bucket. 
Oh, Coop. man. We should get them out here to talk about Shred Bros. Hey, boys. Where are they at? Come here, guys. We need, we need, a, little, uh, need a little update on Shred Bros. We got Griff. We got Coop. We got Bob. Griff, your birthday day. Happy birthday, bud. Ten years old. Coop, it's not your birthday yet, but I'm sure it's coming up real soon because <laughs> Abby had one, so I'm sure your parents kept things the same the whole time. He's an April guy. Oh, April. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe not. You guys threw a curveball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened. Could so have been a... Shred Bros. What about it? How'd it come up? What was the idea behind Shred Bros? So, well, we were thinking about like making like a skiing company and we weren't really, we weren't really like actually thinking that we would start doing it. And then Cooper sort of brought up the idea again, I guess, and... How long ago? Is this like, you this guys was are like, like five? This was like three years ago. Oh, so you're like seven. Uh, yeah. Normal seven-year-old stuff. Yeah. Hey, That's bro, let's start a company. I'm feeling a little, real lucky this year. Yeah, they 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 love the idea of um, of being involved with water skiing and snow skiing. So, um, you know, to have that connectivity to it, and we all sat down and talked about it. And their sister is involved with it as well, uh, Abby. And, and so we thought this would be a great way to do it. Right, guys? So mm -hmm. how many days a year do you snow ski? Um, 65, 65, yeah. 65, 70. That's a lot of days, dude. Yep. How do you keep up with the pipe cleaners? Oh. How, do you, how do you do it? Well, these guys are unbelievable. I'm chasing them constantly yeah. in the chase, and so let's not do any Sonny Bono type stuff. You make sure you're wearing your helmet. Even oh if it's yeah. Crooked yeah, 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 yeah. At all times, to totally. Bra knee braces. We have talks before we go out every day, right? Basically, yeah. safety first. Trees yeah. don't move. That type of stuff. Trees don't move. <laughs> yeah. Not in this world. Maybe in um, Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Not, not in this world. Stay in the middle of the yeah. of the uh, trail. Yeah. You know, no no violent turns. So, um, water skiing, let's talk about it. What, what, what do you guys like about water skiing? Why do you do it? I like well, it because it's fun. I mean... Is it like snow skiing, kind of, to you? Do you think it's similar? No way. Yeah. Kinda? Do you like the exhilaration? Like, the yeah. what, what do you like best? Get, getting pulled up, or...? Kind of in our turn, most. Yeah. Mm. Coop's got the turn pretty dialed. Mm. We're working on the way crossings, but the turn... Got it pretty dialed already. Yeah. You're, you're riding a VTR. Mm -hmm. You just rode a VTR today. Dude, unbelievable. Yeah, first time. Quite a difference. I mean, I was skiing on something from the 60s. Yes. You know, it was like uh, something my Nana made out of a coffee table. <laughs> and Marcus goes, try this ski. And I was like, whoa, that thing is fast, man. So what's uh, what are we talking here? You guys... You've been in the course a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. But we're learn we're trying to learn how to ski the course. Yep. How to go today on the water? Pretty good. I mean, yeah. I got only one at but 28 off, but we were on the doing real course, way better. On but we you skied. But we did practice doing like the small yeah. course. Mini course. Yeah. Mini course. Yeah. Mm. How was that? That was good. Yeah. Definitely yeah. helped, like with the weight crossing and yeah, like training for. It's about rhythm, right? Yeah. It's like anything else in life: timing and rhythm. Mm-hmm. Keeping your eyes open, trying to be in the right place at the right time. Who's your favorite skiers? My favorite skiers? Yeah. You uh, get multiple. I like Will Asher, of course, from Marcus. <laughs> um, Willie's a good guy. Uh, I like I like Travis Fisher. Go Travis, well. good yeah. skier. Trent. And he, and he Trent does a lot of filming. Lyson. Yeah, Trent. Um, Trent, he's got ink everywhere now. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's going for it. Sleeved yeah, up. Money. Sleeved it up, Bob. <laughs> yep. Oh, there we go. The Irish Thunder. Yep. Well, ink. Yeah. You're too young for that. Yeah, not yet, boys. You got to wait a little longer. So what do you think of NorCal? First time ever. First trip to Northern California. I like it. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You going to come back? Hopefully. Maybe. Are we going to do some snow skiing maybe this fall or spring, I mean, summer, I like winter? Yeah. What's your favorite sports now? How does this rank water skiing? Well, um, water skiing and snow skiing are tied. Yeah, water yeah. skiing and snow skiing, they're tied, and, like, they're definitely my favorite sports. 
And then there's baseball and karate, and I like you, those. Did I, did I hear you guys are like black belts or something? He's not a black belt yet. He's almost there. He's almost there. Almost. I, yeah. I am. One. Does that mean you could like beat your old man up if you uh, wanted to? <laughs> what if you both double, what if you double team him? Do you think you could take him? <laughs> I'm black actually. Belt? He's fast though. He could probably, you got to catch him first. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. well, it, he doesn't look it, but he's still probably pretty fast for about 25 yards. We I know. got it. Thunderous. Hey, the, but living in Maine, let me ask you guys a question. There's not a lot of kids that ski, mm -hmm. right? And that's difficult, but it's important that you've been training all your friends, right? So now you actually have, a couple of, yeah. you have your cousin Max and you got Teddy and, um, there's a bunch of other kids that actually have kind of caught up to them yeah. enough that will slalom with them and ski with them. Yeah. You got and, a crew. Yeah. You're, you're building a crew. Yep. yep. And otherwise, they've got kids that will come up that just want to tube or want to do this, want to do that. And that's fine too, but but um, if if we can teach some skiers, right? And, it's a skill. Yeah. 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 And Talk about that because, like, our sport, a lot of times, okay, you see our lake, right? Mm -hmm. You probably skied on maybe a man made lake once before or maybe never this is the first time first for them time. first time so you see how like this is like one boat at a time mm -hmm. yeah so you can you can imagine like some people on these lakes are like we don't want to teach people how to ski because that's less time for us mm -hmm. but you guys are like talking about how you're trying to get more of your buds into it right mm -hmm. so you have more people to share it with that's pretty cool yeah and before you guys skied remember we would go out tubing and stuff like that and once you learned how to slalom we might as well have just thrown everything else away yeah. because mm -hmm. there was absolutely well, no tube need. Doesn't, the tube's broke. Yeah, tube's broken. <laughs> but two skis, uh, everything else, all the smaller boards and stuff they would use, um, really no need for any of that after, you know. Yeah. Uh, they, they do wake surf. They like that. That's fun. Wake you know. Fun. But, um, but they're trying to teach as many friends as possible, yeah. you know. Good. Uh, Proud of you guys. It's awesome. We we'll keep yeah. keep it going. Maybe Definitely. maybe some other kids out there will pick up on that. Get their buddies out to the lake. So what else? What else we want to talk about? You know, I'm I'm pretty stoked to have the Marleys here. Dude, the whole, this has been unbelievable. We came crew. in, we flew in, and uh, I mean, it just so happens it was Griffin's birthday, but it's yeah. like the best birthday ever. And we've just been out shredding, shredding, learning more and more, and uh, trying to figure the course out and. We haven't got you in the gym yet. I don't know if we're gonna do that torture. Get Jenny, run you through a couple drills. Yeah. In there. Who went to the bathroom this morning and saw Jenny working out? Uh, was it Coop? I think it was like me. Oh yeah. Was she doing? Was she walking on her hands or something? She was like lifting like a five million pound weight. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I just like. He I came back. Like, I'm like, what? He came back in here. He goes. Dad, I went to the bathroom, I went in there, and she was lifting like 600 pounds over her head. And I go, what did you do? He goes, I just, I left. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I was scared. <laughs> yeah. I was scared, Dad. Crazy. Uh, yeah, well, that's what we do at the Ridge. Yeah. We try, to, try to get as much time on the water and uh, as much time taking care of our, our fitness. Yeah. It, I mean, it, you know, you guys have skied a lot, but you've taken what? couple weeks off yeah th three and a half weeks or and, so and you see how you're kind of a little out of sh just a little out of shape yeah. not much but that's what's crazy about skiing is the only way to really stay in shape for skiing is Keep to ski to do it yeah exactly. yeah yeah and then uh tomorrow we'll make the trek home and then they're, they're on the snow probably in two weeks, two, three weeks before yeah. thanksgiving and then we're going to try to go because florida is close for us yeah so this winter, we're going to try to go to Florida and, and ski down there um, a couple times and then get back after it. And, you know, I mean, we've been out there in April skiing around ice chunks. Yeah. So yeah. you use those for turn buoys. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. In Maine, we don't have buoy courses. We got ice chunks. Take me around the, the Titanic turn. The Titanic yeah. turn. <laughs> so so we'll, we'll be after it in, in the spring and then right straight through. But it's great because we last year we had it where what did we get it down to, Coop? We had we went water skiing on like November seventh. We seventh. Yeah. Wow. So four days away and then they yeah. skied all winter and then there was about a two week period in between and they were back in the water. Back in the water. 
Yeah. Well, we need to get you out in the spring so we can do the water ski, snow ski in one day. Mm. Have you ever done that? No. Oh my gosh. That's going to happen. Okay, so Shred Bros, how can people find out more about Shred Bros? Get a sweatshirt, a shirt, a hat. Where do they go? Well, we have an Instagram. It's just Shred Bros. And then if you want to like uh, purchase some of our merchandise, you could click on the link in our bio on our yeah. Instagram, and that leads us to our website where we sell our own. Is it ShredBros.com? Uh, it's not Shred. It's not. It's not ShredBros.com. It's on like uh, another site. Yeah. 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 Mm. Cool. So you got to go to Instagram, Shred Bros on Instagram. Well, it can also links be you Facebook. You or Facebook. Facebook and yeah, you they're on Facebook. Twitter. What do you guys have for sale there? Uh, on our website? Yep. Well, right now we don't have much, but we're planning on putting more on. Like, yeah, hats and sweatshirts and yeah. stuff like that. And then um, part of the proceeds go to uh, main base kids charities. Oh, cool. So they, we do, I do a big comedy ski tour every year where I go out and do like nine or ten mountains. Yeah. And these guys go with me, and we basically ski all day. Then we, go, they set their Shred Brother stuff up. At night. You guys and they, ski all day yeah, and they night. sell stuff at night. Yeah. And last year they sold like five thousand dollars worth of stuff in one week. Wow. And then they That's donated a whole bunch of money to um, the Adaptive Ski Program yeah. at Shawnee awesome. Peak, and to try to help those people out. And um, you know, which is great for people that don't have give means them, to get down the mountain. Give them back. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. That's important. So they like that, and yeah. Well, uh, what, what's coming down the pipe? What's next? What's the next big thing for you guys? Sure, Besides um, school, for just you guys in general, life. We got New York coming up New in a couple York, weeks. Yeah. We've got a family tradition. We go to New York every year. At, right we go after. Fat, sweaty pork for Thanksgiving in New York. Yeah, we go yeah. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday after Thanksgiving, oh, and we yeah. go down and go to shows and yeah. and awesome. hang out and do all that. Christmas and, tree lighting. And, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. So we do that, and then. Uh, do you drive or do you fly, New York? Fly. Yeah, fly. we've done both, but the drive is just. Maine's practice. It's, it's in the polar. It's in the. North of the cir circle, right? Yeah. What's we, it called the Polar? Uh, uh, polar Express? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> north, north of that line where everything's all ice. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah the um, Arctic Circle? Arctic no. Circle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, north of that? We're six hours uh, north of Boston. So we're, we're, I mean, north of New York. So we're right on the Canadian border up there. The state is, but we're not us. We're southern Maine. But yeah. the drive to New York is like six hours. So we... Um, not worth it. No, we fly down and yeah. go down. And, but we flew out here, and that was that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, it was long, but totally worth it. We're having a blast at the ridge. What can you tell everybody out there that's maybe still listening about this lifestyle, water ski lifestyle? Like, one thing, one word of encouragement, one piece of advice. You got people listening. You got kids out there that might want to learn how to ski. Um, how long did it take you to learn how to ski? Like... Just a few tries, I guess. When you put but, your mind to it. Yeah. Because we heard yeah. the story. Yeah. You had a bad day. You popped up well on two, right? And then you struggled with one. I was telling Marcus we went to Lake Mead, and then mm -hmm. you, you didn't have a good run at it. But today is the day. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that. You're just, you just woke up. You're like, I'm going to ski today. I'm like, I'm tired of being the only one on two skis with a bar. I'm like... <laughs> With a bar. Cooper knows how to what the like, slalom ski, same as Abby. Yeah. Today is the day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Well, sweet Marley crew, thanks for uh, being here. Yeah, Stoked man. Stoked to have you. Hopefully this. Uh, hopefully some people. Are... You guys still out there? What's going people on, man? Watching? Yeah. Shred it, had. Do not not shred it. How do people find out about what you? You can go to Bob Marley Comedy on Facebook and Twitter, or bmarley.com is my website. Okay. And uh, you got to do it, people. If not now, when are you going to do it? You'll be one day older when you do do it. That's it. You either, you either, it's a gift, right? Life, it's a gift. So you either go get it or don't waste it. That's all. Let's shred. Bob Marley, I forgot to ask, where did the name come from? Did your parents name you after the Bob Marley? No, that was my dad's name too, Irish oh, guy. You're, you're like the second. I'm a junior, Bob yeah. Marley Jr. And, uh, and, but my dad had no idea who Bob Marley was. No. And I, don't, I never do jokes about it in my act because I didn't want it to be like a thing. thing. But like as a kid, we used to go to restaurants and stuff yeah. and he'd put our name in. Yeah. And then they'd say, Bob Marley, party of four. And then 
some would, the, you know, some bus boy or whatever be like, Bob Marley, I want to jam it. <laughs> jam it. And my dad be like, oh, jamming it with me. <laughs> I got a wife and kids over here. <laughs> Fella. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's just a coincidence, but yeah. it is a great name to have. If you have to be stuck with a name, yeah. you know. That's not a bad name to have. It's a cool name. I mean, because he was all things good. But, oh, I forgot to ask you, best... Uh, um, Stand up or best late show you've been on? What's your favorite favorite uh, um, time on a late show? Who was I it? really liked Leno. He was good yeah. to me, and I and Jimmy Fallon was awesome. Yeah, super nice. You, do you know Fallon very well? No, I don't know him very well, but I we hung out in the green room, yeah. and he came he came back. A lot of them don't come back. He yeah. came back and sat in the dressing room with me for like twenty minutes. Hung out. Yeah, and we both knew uh, had worked at the comedy store in L.A. Yeah. Uh, you know, and Mitzi Shore, who's famous comedy club owner, owned the club. And is that Polly Shore's? Yes, and she's like this. And I have a theory that most great comedy club owners have people impersonate them all the time. Like Bud Friedman from The Improv is always like this. No standing in the hallways. <laughs> and Jamie at the Laugh Factory, Jamie Masada, who was my manager when I lived in L.A., who's a great guy. He was like, listen, buddy, man, we're going to do it. You guys met Jamie. You went out yeah. and met Jamie. Yeah. He had a talking fish on the wall in his office. And, uh, and Griffin was only like six. And he goes, oh, I like that fish. And Jamie goes, get the fish off the wall. Give to kid now. Let's go. Come on, man. <laughs> so anyway, Mitzi Shore, uh, Jimmy Fallon had known her too. And is, that, is that Polly Shore's mother? Yeah. And wow. she's a, she was a nice lady. She still is a nice lady. And, and, and she would always go like, nah, yeah. So we both had like dueling impressions of her. And then when I walked out to do the show, I looked over and I went, ah, and he was already like laughing kind of, you know? Jimmy was busting up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the, awesome. uh, yeah, Leno and Jimmy Fallon, I mean, they're all fun to do, yeah. but those guys go out of their way to make you feel comfortable. Feel at home. And when you do that, I think you get the best performance out. Like, like I can just say from going to all these other ski schools and stuff. I was going to say. Yeah, get your stuff on. I'll be, I'll be down. I'm gonna warm up the boat. Yes. Get your stuff on. Yes. Like that doesn't work as well as, oh hey, so, uh, so you bring your own stuff or you know, do yeah. you need a rope? Do you need gloves? Well, no. Like we came out here and we've been just skiing and it's just fun and it's yeah. free form and we, you come away with some stuff, yeah. and you know, it's about I went problem. to one place in Florida and I did one run and the guy goes, I'm not seeing a lot of problems, and I was like, bring me back to the dock. I go, there's nothing but problems. Yeah. It's a hot mess. If you can't see him, then I'm if, in the wrong place. If you can't see any problems out here, I am in the wrong place. <laughs> this, this is full of problems, you know. But um, that's what's been great about be hanging out with you because it's so, everything's so easy going and, you know, you... We're pretty uptight here at the Ridge. You learn, but it's, you're learning in a fun way, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and there is a correlation, you know, with... Uh, better outcomes when you're trying to keep it fun yeah, yeah yeah cool thanks guys thanks for hanging out got got it got it got it get it cool. get it camera two we've been ignoring you but we still love you over and out kimasabi good times the thanks, ridge guys. the sun is going down we're getting back to shredsville shred yeah, it's time to shred again <laughs> who's up shreditude who's up guys um oh 40 take a stab thanks guys that was fun yeah man i think we got we got some we how got, long did we go an hour and a half i don't even know an hour and 20 minutes an hour and 20 minutes an hour and 20 minutes